What's up everyone? Welcome to day one. We're going to go ahead and start off with our all fours abs breathing. We're trying to keep things moving. So um, let's get right into it. We're going to get into all fours. I want your hands to be directly under your shoulders. I want your knees to be directly under your hips. Now what you're going to try to do, what you're going to see a lot throughout this program is the idea of finding your hamstrings to tuck your butt under you. If you're having someone or if you're someone who has chronic lower back pain, you have a lot of tightness in your lower back. It might make sense to round out completely. So round your whole entire spine. That's okay. What I don't want is for your head to start looking down. See if you can get your head to look there. So that could be you too. So there's a little bit of variability within there. Just make sure that you feel like your hamstrings right under here are tucking your butt under you. And now we're going to just take a nice relaxed inhale through our nose. Very, very important. When you're inhaling, I want you to imagine your rib cage is filling up. On your exhale, I want it to be super long. Let's start off with a foggy sigh on your exhale. So let's have it sound like this. As you're exhaling, you should feel like your ribs are wrapping down, around, and in so that the front is closing, okay? Let's add a one to three second pause after your exhale, okay? We're just gonna be only in this position for right now, taking some breaths. You're reaching the ground away from you. Gentle inhale through your nose, nothing in through the mouth. We're never gonna teach teach you to breathe in through your mouth in this program. And we're thinking about filling up our rib cage. As you get better at exhaling and really closing the front of the ribs and getting that air out and finding your abs, what you should be able to feel is that your next inhale goes more into the bra strap or the turtle shell, okay? So that's very, very important. We'd like you to start to get air there. So now we're gonna do about five to 10 more breaths and start to focus a little bit more on your inhale actually going into that area. The way the inhale gets there is because the exhale is successful. So when you're doing your exhales now, instead of having the relaxed ones, let's try to blow out through a straw. Your neck still isn't working, but you're feeling almost like your abs and your deep abs, the TVA, all that kind of stuff, the corset around your body is wrapping all the way in, and now you just start to feel those lower abs towards the end. Next thing, you're gonna go ahead and slowly lean forward without losing your tuck. Beautiful. Oh. Just right there, and you should feel a huge difference as you saw Orlani did, okay? Now we're just gonna take three more breaths here. If you're um, really comfortable, you can start doing this where you set yourself up and then go right into leaning forward. We're just showing you slowly progressing everything as we move on throughout this whole entire program. The other thing that you can progress is fully exhaling and holding for as much as three to five seconds. So we can hold the exhale a little bit longer, okay? Good job. So that's how we're gonna do our all four abs. Now let's flip over and we're gonna go ahead and get into our 90-90 um, on the wall. Next up, we have our foam roller knee rolls. We're setting up on the wall in 90 degrees. Extremely important that you're straight up here, you're straight 90 degrees here, our feet are even. We don't have one foot turned out, not one higher than the other. Everything's locked in even, okay? Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and try to tuck our butt under us by scooping your pelvis under you. That should cause your knees to lift up about a half an inch. You're also thinking about dragging your heels down the wall, okay? We're gonna put this in between here and we're just gonna start taking some breaths. Let's put this a little lower so you can squeeze it in between your thighs. There you go, right there. Good, okay, so squeezing that at about three out of 10. That means you don't have to crush it, but it doesn't fall out either. The main goal is pulling down for right now. We're gonna take a couple of nice relaxed breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. The longer you exhale, the better. No neck on your inhales, no mouth breathing whatsoever, again, ever, okay? Now, as you're here, try to get a good sensation of your heels. So feel them on the wall. They're isometrically pulling down. They're not moving, but they are pulling down. You should feel these muscles, your hamstrings, and then even more importantly, the ones down by your butt cheeks, they should be tucking your butt under you as if your back pockets are sliding up to the backs of your knees. Your back is relaxed, keyword relaxed, but also it should be relatively flat too, and that's okay. The bottom of your spine, your sacrum, thinking about your tailbone, is gonna scoop up under you also, okay? So that's what we want. There should be no contact there. Now, when you're taking your breaths, relaxed inhales, long exhales. As you do that, I'm just gonna talk through this. The foam roller is big, and that's okay. We wanna be able to start off with it big and then work towards something smaller. The further your knee is in, in relationship to your hip, so it starts to look like your hips out here and your knees in here with your feet there. 
that makes it a little bit harder because there's more hip adduction across the midline. When we have the foam roller wider and everything just looks nice and straight like this, it should be a little bit easier, but that's a great place to start for everyone. So now let's get into the actual knee roll. So you should feel your hamstrings, should feel your abs, and should be able to breathe here. That's a good first place to start. Now you're gonna think about pulling your knee or your hip into the socket. One knee goes down, so her left hip is pulling in, her right hip is going up. So they're doing this. One goes back, one goes up, and we're shifting like this. Let's have you do one more to the left side and just hold it. Good, hold right here. Good. Give me a little bit more squeeze here so this doesn't move at all. Good, very nice. Okay. Now, what we're looking to have happen is this left one is not just pulling down into the ground, it's pulling across, just like I said with the adduction. So the inner thigh right here should be the main muscle that's working. And then on this right side, she's not trying to crush inward, she's trying to get this right knee up to the ceiling, and it should in turn actually use the outside of the butt to go up and out, while this one goes down and in. So they're doing opposites, okay? Now, let's get one good breath here and just hold it so you can really feel that left inner thigh. That's gonna be a huge one. We wanna be able to connect the left heel and the left inner thigh. Then you're gonna go ahead and rotate. So now we're gonna to try to get that moving. Go ahead and put your hands on this, good. And what I want you to do is as you rotate, turn with your hands, like put your whole fingers on there and everything. There you go. So when she rotates, if you're having trouble getting it to move at all, which almost everybody will, you'll probably get into this exercise and go, it'll just be stuck. You might feel your lower back going up and down and like you're arching it. Maybe you even see your head moving somehow, right? So most people, when they don't have movement there, they try to get it from anywhere else. So by putting your hands on here and actually guiding the movement, so that the feedback is felt on the inner thighs and you can really feel how it's shifting you, that can really help. We're gonna give you about 15 to 20 more seconds. The rep scheme here is 10 to 30. Progress a little bit. If you need to spend extra time in just the 90-90 breathing at first, that's okay too. And what we're really looking to have happen is her rib cage, her head, all that stuff stays here up top, but her, the bottom of her body, especially from this angle, should really look like it's shifting side to side. So it should be when you pull the left one down and in, your hips shift over to the left. Because what we're trying to get your brain to recognize is how to pull you over to your left side and then push you back to the right. Pull you over to the left side, push you back to the right. Does that sound like walking and running? Absolutely, that's what we're trying to restore here. Is your, your pelvis and the bones there, the ability to move how they should when they walk. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a break now and we're gonna transition to the next thing. Next up, staying in that same exact position, we're just gonna change it up a little bit. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put this in here because just so you can see a little bit easier, still have your feet a little bit closer, so if you're gonna use something smaller, your feet might have to get closer, um, but that's just so you can see. You could totally use your foam roller still. Um, now what we're gonna do is continually pull down, find those hamstrings, I want you to really focus on your left heel. So I want you to really feel the outside of this left heel and try to get it to drag down so that you feel these hamstrings right here under your butt working hard and be able to exhale and relax there. One more thing that I didn't say earlier, with any of this stuff, if your neck's uncomfortable and you need a pillow, feel free to use it perfectly fine, okay? Now, we're gonna keep that left hamstring, we're gonna lift that right foot up. Good, you can either keep it here, if that's a, an option, that's the best option, or as a regression, we could actually put it on the wall like this, but just the heel. So that's just sitting there, or we can even have it straight and on the heel. So basically, we wanna offload the right side and put you on your left side. So anything in that continuum that you can do, that's great. If possible, I'd love for it to come back up here, or Lonnie's gonna have to do it there, sorry. Now you're gonna reach your left hand towards your right foot. So you're gonna take that left hand, reach towards the right foot. I don't want your head to lift up. What I'm looking to have happen is not for you to just take your whole body there. I want your shoulder blade to actually reach. So it's as if your ribs are coming back and your shoulder blade's going forward. So it's wrapping around the rib cage. And now you're just gonna go into some breaths. We're gonna take about 10 breaths here. Relaxed inhale, no neck whatsoever. If you want, relax, exhale, or you can blow out through the straw. They're both great options as long as you feel like this stuff is tightening up and you're using your abs to kind of get the air out. Not crunching, not bracing, but letting the exhale do the work. And on your inhales, there's no shrugging, no tension in the neck, no tension in the jaw. If you want, you can think about relaxing your jaw on the roof of your mouth or your tongue on the roof of your mouth so that your jaw and all those muscles in your neck just completely relax. 
Some people might do really well with closing their eyes here and there throughout all this stuff. So just giving you some more options to work on you specifically. We're just gonna take five more breaths. For these last five, challenge yourself a little bit and see if you can hold your exhale for one to three seconds. So if you get rid of all the air, the amount of air that you get rid of in week one and week six should pale in comparison. They should not even be the same person. You should be able to get so much more air out on your exhales as you progress through this stuff compared to the first time. So as soon as you think you're out of air, exhale a little bit more. You got a little bit more to get out, I promise. And then learn how to get comfortable there. Let's do two more breaths and then we're gonna switch sides. And this is one of those daily ones. We could do this anytime. You're really looking to have your toes relatively relaxed, the ball, the foot's on there, but our main goal is can we feel the outside of this heel nice and flush with the wall? You're never pushing the wall away. You can go ahead and go ahead and switch just like you were going to. You're never pushing the wall away. We're dragging it down on this, okay? Same idea. Find that right hamstring now. Take note, does it feel a little bit easier? Remember, back is relaxed and flat even more relaxed and flat so you're not trying to push it into the ground you're just making sure it's not arched and then your tailbone scooped under you you're reaching across your body so when we reach across our body our rib cage and our sternum should turn slightly to the left it should be very slight but we do want that we want to make sure that we're getting that around the rib cage and up you can keep your elbow relatively soft we don't have to try to lock it out because we're not really after the elbow as much as we're after the reach and you getting across your body like that you should feel different things fill up on each side. So when you inhale, try to imagine where is the air going. Anywhere in the rib cage is fair game, but we'd love for you to really feel abs on the exhales. And then your next inhale will be even better. The exhale is what alley-oops inhale. Always try to remember that. Beautiful, we're gonna give you five more really good breaths. Again, if you can, hold for three, Five seconds, even one second is great on your full exhale. Feel those abs start to work a little bit, engage. And then your next inhale, surprise yourself and feel, oh my God, I found my abs. Now the air went to a different spot and that felt really good. And that's what we're looking for. The other thing about the breath holds is if you're someone who's struggling with one second, but you're going to three and then your next breath turns into <gasps> and you got to restart the exercise, that's not what we're here for especially on this day. We're just easing you into it, trying to get you a little bit better every week. Find out where you are and progress slowly, okay? Let's give you 10, 15 more seconds to finish up this last breath or two. Rep scheme here is anywhere between 10 to 30 breaths. It's all about the efficiency and how well you're doing them anyway. So it's not so much about the importance of the exact numbers. Good, and let's slowly come out of here and we'll transition to the next thing. Next up, we have you sideline. I want you to recognize that you're sideline in the exact same position that you were just face up in. So we flipped you on your side. Same idea, these 90 degree angles are very important. Give me a 90 degree angle there. And then can you move your heels further that way? Beautiful, even better. Now, everybody's a little different at home, right? So if we have this border here, I can't have you have one foot on the border and one foot off, because then you'll be uneven up here. What I'd like to see is you get both feet above the border and find out how to get our heels even, our feet even. At no point did the feet leave the wall. So three points of contact right under the ball of the foot, the pinky and the heel stay down the whole time okay from here we have this nice straight line okay and we're able to tuck our butt under you if you're having trouble tucking your butt under you here which is really common let's take three breaths imagine that she's pulling the wall down and back so towards me and that should help her find her hamstrings and tuck her butt under her and now she can take a couple of good breaths she has a, you can't see it, but there's a ball under there for a pillow. I do want the pillow here for you guys because you, there's no way to completely relax it. So that way you put something under your head so it's nice and relaxed. Now, after one or two more breaths, we'll go into it. What we're looking to have happen is nothing above this line should move. So I don't want her sternum or her chest, her Iron Man symbol to move side to side at all. And the way that we're gonna ensure that is we're gonna put this hand here and I'm gonna have her actually push it into the ground and then let your elbow go forward. Good, so now she can use her abs and really use this reach to make sure her upper body doesn't move. So she has another level of support or another um, a contact point of support. So let's start off by just going forward. I want you to slide this knee forward. Beautiful, and just hold it right there. So when this knee goes forward, 
what we're looking to do is almost have the left one stay where it is or pull in. So they're doing opposites again. You're doing, again, foam roller, knee rolls, just on your side. These are scissor slides. Now she's going to go ahead and pull that hip back in the socket. And we want to be able to get the knee to go here while the other one stays a little bit in front. And now go back again. I have the ball under there, so she has a little bit of a ball that she can roll on and go back and forth. It's a really great thing to start with again. But just know if you didn't have one, you could still do this. And we, yeah, just keep going. We're gonna get around 10 to 20 of them. So as you're doing it, the ball really helps, but you could totally have no ball and your knee could be sliding on your other knee. It's really important that when you go forward, you're almost thinking about lifting up. So as she goes that way, I want her knee to think about going up in that direction. As she comes down, I want her knee to crush the ball and go in and back. So it's in and back, it's forward and up. And those things are really important. Now, notice that she's got these nice abs over here. Her side hasn't changed at all, so her hips aren't hiking up and down. Same thing as the foam roller knee rolls. At first, some of you guys are gonna have no movement. On the fifth rep, you'll get some shaking, some fluttering, and you'll open up a little bit. Don't go so far that your whole body is cheating. Find out where you are, not because you're gonna get hurt, just because I want you to be efficient with exercise. So slowly work on getting bigger and bigger and realize when some of this stuff starts moving better and you'll see how much it carries over to all your other movements. Let's do two more. Good. Most people are gonna really lose their feet. Oftentimes when you lose your heels on the wall, it's because you started with your feet so far back that you lost your 90 degree angle. So when you have to flex your ankle and go forward for the slide, you already started so forward that you can't keep your heel down. We want the heel, the big, uh, the ball of the foot, and under the pinky toe, those three points of contact, your tripod to stay on both feet the whole time, okay? Now let's go ahead and uh, flip over, do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, so same thing, we got our 90 degree angle. So we can go ahead and see 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here, I'll put the ball under here. Good, and now you're gonna go ahead and go. Nice and easy, nice and smooth. Notice that everything is facing this way or facing away from this camera. She's got that little bit of ab on the side there. So if you notice you're someone who's like your right side here especially is just crunching into the ground, try to use an exhale and feel like you're doing a side plank, like it pulls away. Everybody's gonna look different on the side and keep going now, so you're gonna get 10 to 20 reps. And we're just looking for that hip to slide out of the socket and to slide back in. It's all happening under muscular control. So it's not like it's just falling out. You're actually actively using all of the stuff around the pelvis and the hip, the inner thigh, all these different muscles. You're learning how to coordinate them in one of the basic movements of the pelvis, which is for one to slide by and one to pull back in. So that's exactly what we're doing here. Same idea, we wanna keep those heels flush with the wall. We wanna keep the ball of the foot flush with the wall. She's doing a great job, I'm just mentioning it. And you wanna to try to think about feeling your inner thigh on the way back, especially on the left side here, put a little emphasis on it. If you can't find it, add some holds, maybe for a little extra credit, hold for 20 seconds while you're feeling your inner thigh. Pull in and down. So it's going into the socket and it's crushing the ball downward. Good, nice, okay. And then as you slide forward, you're also thinking about getting your knee out and up. So it's those two opposite directions that are gonna really free up movement there. Should be no pinching or pain here. And you're also looking for everything to stay stacked. So at no point does her hip hike up. At no point does she like crush the ground on the side here. So depending on your body um, composition, you're either gonna be flush with the ground or you're gonna be far, farther away from it, but don't be switching back and forth because that would mean that you're cheating through the rest of your body, okay? Let's do one more rep and give you 10 to 15 more seconds. Nice. Beautiful. Okay. Now let's go ahead and uh, switch again. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and get into um, a different position face up. 
All right, next up, we're looking at a crossover variation. This time we're just working a little bit more on hip extension. So instead of having your knees up, we're gonna have one leg relatively straight. So she's gonna have this right foot. I really wanna put an emphasis on the right foot, especially pushing through the ball of the foot. So I want you to feel the ball of the foot push in without your knee slamming into the ground. So notice her knee is soft. It's actually not even touching the ground. So it's like the backside of her hip and her hamstring are pulling down the wall and pushing into it more so than she's just locking her knee down, okay? I don't want that at all. Now on this side, we're gonna bring this knee up to around 90 degrees. If anybody struggles with 90 degrees, you could go less, and we're even gonna give you this to make that happen, because ideally it can just hang here and you're able to do the drill, but we're gonna put this here so that everybody can get a little bit better with that. You're gonna get your opposite elbow and you're gonna put that there, okay? This could be big too, so. It could be even bigger if you needed it to. The idea is that we're closing one side and opening the other. Your left arm could be out to the side, could be on your side here. I, it could even be reaching up to the ceiling. I just need it to be relaxed or wherever it is, you're not really thinking about it too much. Same idea, relaxed inhales, no neck, no shrugging, long exhales. When we do our exhales, you should feel the abs on the front left and this right shoulder coming together. So those parts, the left side of your pelvis, the right side of your rib cage come together and they close. When they close on your exhale, see if you can hold for one to three seconds, then on your inhales, send that air everywhere. Really important, I want you to be able to feel the right foot on the wall. I want this to be really prominently pushing in I want this knee to be relatively relaxed. There you go, good. So it's a super tough balance to not pull your knee into the ground and try to lock it out with your quad. We want these muscles to be relaxed so that the backside and the butt can work into it. Notice I haven't said anything about flattening your back. I don't need you to, don't even think about it. Should be no pinching in the front of the hip. If you needed a regression here, you could go back to the first one that we did with the crossover breathing and everything's flexed closer to the wall. And you're just gonna go ahead and give me five more breaths. So nice relaxed inhale, long exhales. Good, and feel your abs closing across your body. Anytime you can hold for one to three seconds, better. That would be great and feel how, again, as you exhale really well, as you learn how to hold your breath and solidify the front so that everything closes on the front of the rib cage, your air starts to go into new spots. You might feel something cracking, something opening up, almost like you're getting air to a spot that's never been, you know, ha had any expansion before, which is really the goal here. Okay, let's go ahead and slowly switch. So you just put that left leg out. Push the left ball of the foot into the wall, relax the knee, bring the right one up, cross over. Let's do this one without the crossover just so that they can see. So you're gonna go ahead and put this arm out to the side just for fun, and you're gonna bring that left arm up to the ceiling there. There you go, and keep reaching that up. Beautiful, good. Same idea, long exhales. Good, feel your abs come all the way down and in. As you inhale, gentle. You don't need to rush. If you feel like on your inhales you're hitting a wall, don't push through the wall. So if your inhale gets to the second or third second and it stops going somewhere and it feels like it's <laughs> choking you up, go into your next exhale. There is no mouth breaths. We don't do mouth breaths in this. It's never gonna happen. And you're continually thinking about putting some good pressure into the ball of the foot without the knee locking out. So the knee is staying soft, not touching the ground. You're pushing in through the wall. Inhales are big across the rib cage. We're gonna give you five more breaths and then we're gonna finish up with our last exercise of the day. You guys did great. I know some of this stuff can be boring. Some of it can be complicated, but you'll get better at it every single week. And I promise you, once you start feeling the difference, even if it's just walking the dog in the morning, you'll start to realize how important this stuff is. And the fun stuff that progresses comes soon. It's just, we need to lay the foundation or else you'll never get there properly. Two more breaths and then we'll transition. Relaxed inhale, longest exhale you got. If at any moment you wanna do the foggy sigh, or the out through the straw. They're both great options, especially as long as you're not using your neck, okay? All right, let's put that down. We're gonna go back onto our side and we're gonna finish up. 
Last but not least, this is going to be the hardest one. It's going to be a little bit more strength oriented than uh, breathing, but you'll see what we're doing. So first thing starts out just like the scissor slide. You're going to slide that right knee forward. Then you're going to lift it up as high as you can. It should not lift high because this needs to stay down. Okay. So now from this position, I want you to feel yourself push through the ball, your right foot, especially keep your left heel on the wall, all three points of contact, but focus on the left heel slightly. And what you should feel is this butt cheek, this whole area right here should be working hard to lift that up. Imagine I'm pushing you down and you got to fight. When you lift up, you're going to be really prone to pulling in, but I need you to try to go in that direction the entire time. Big difference. You feel that? Good. So keep that pressure that way and up. Look how high Orlani's is. That's normal. Okay. So I don't need you to get so high. It's probably good to be true if you did. All right, we got that right hand on the ground right here. Create a little bit of pressure into the ground. Make sure you feel some abs over here. Notice she's not crushing the ground. Now here's the hard part. Without moving your feet, you're gonna try to get that, this knee to lift up and in. So can you lift your left knee towards your right one and pull it into the socket? It's not about touching, it's about lifting as high as you can without anything else moving. You're gonna get 10 of them. I suggest either lifting when you've already exhaled or during your exhale. You can inhale whenever you want outside of that. If the breathing, thinking about it too much at first is too much, that's fine. I'm just telling everybody that so that they can progress or whenever they're ready for it. You're going to get 10 reps. Okay. Orlani, you're keeping count the entire time. I don't want this to leave my finger. So it's not only forward, but it's up. So it has to stay here the whole time. And then you try to lift that left knee up and in. I do not expect anybody to be able to do this at first. It's really a declaration of telling your body you're going to be capable of something in the future. And everything we just did made this more possible, but it doesn't happen overnight. So keep this as a marker. And this is a really great assessment for you in terms of asymmetries from side to side. Technically where she's at right now should be the harder side for almost everybody. What I don't want you to do is send me a message and say, Hey Ian, I got 20 of those. That was easy. You send me your form and you look like a wet noodle flopping all over the place and you never even got in position. You should feel your left inner thigh working extremely hard to lift that bottom leg up and pull it in. And you should feel this right butt cheek working the whole entire time. In fact, it's probably more accurate that you get it, lose it and get it back. So that's normal. Just keep that in mind. Let's flip over, set them up again. Same idea, 90 degrees. We're 90, 90 on the wall. Remember any time with the sideline stuff, it's very important that you don't move your feet back and you keep the 90 degree angle. Good. Get just the tiniest little bit in that direction with your butt. Like slide. Yeah, there you go. Good. Okay. Now these start off nice and even. Give me a good breath and put that left hand down first and push it in. Then give me a good exhale, find abs, then slide this forward and up. Good. So all those things can happen. Again, really important that you're thinking about the ball of the foot as you're thinking about pushing this down, because that's the first thing that we want to lose. Everybody wants to roll their ankle out on the wall, but we can't have that. Now go into your 10 reps. So you're going to try to lift that bottom one. The bottom knee isn't just lifting upwards. It's lifting into the socket, just like you did the scissor slides. This is you lifting just like you did the scissor slides. So try to make that connection here. The other thing that's going to happen, like I said, is this top leg is going to move all over the place. But you want to imagine that this knee is staying towards me and up to the ceiling without losing the ball of the foot or the heel. On the bottom leg, the one that you're lifting, the bottom foot often comes off the wall at the heel. So this left heel or sorry, this right heel should be flush with the wall the whole time. And we want to be able to um, feel that. It's not a coincidence. This side feels way easier. Harder? Interesting. Good. Okay. So what you'll see oftentimes, like I said, is the other side is impossible and some people will knock this one out, but that's why we do the assessment. That's why we're doing both sides. So you can notice for extra credit, maybe do an extra five on the side that you're struggling with. Oh. Make sure you do both either way. Okay. Nobody's perfect at both sides. Anyway, 10 reps, 20 is cool. 
it's okay, wherever you wanna be, just make sure that we're progressing and try to focus on your form. That's it for day one, enjoy the rest of your day. Go for a walk, do a little zone two, uh, nasal breathing while you go for a long walk or a hike, maybe a bike ride, that would be ideal. If you have any questions, please let us know.